Well, hello. Happy Friday. Good morning. Welcome to the coding train with train whistle classic because I can't find my new custom laser etch train whistle. I've got to just use this uh, old one that I used to use. Oh, but it has the best sound. Listen to that. Now I'm using some uh, very fancy high tech uh, artificial intelligence sound processing technology to reduce the echo that's in this room that I'm in because I somehow refuse. I should just show you something here. <clears throat> I mean, I should just spend, wouldn't you want to watch just an entire live stream of me? <laughs> kind of trying to attach these to the ceiling, uh, hang some sound blankets. I mean, maybe if I just speak like this, is this better? Um, was the whistle silent? Uh, because I wonder, I have noise reduction on and I wonder if my, no sound? Oh, this is so strange. Are you all hearing me? Please let me know if I'm coming to you loud and clear and live. Whoop, I'm tripping over things. I have something exciting to show you actually though. Oh no, I'm getting a phone call. Oh, this is an important phone call, but I can't take it while I'm live on there. I actually just got a really important text message which read, what am I forgetting for the Seder plate? So I probably should answer that. Uh, uh, happy whatever holiday, if you're choosing to celebrate any of the possible holidays that might be happening anytime within the last six months or the next six months, you know, if you're following a 12 month calendar, oh, there's just so many ways that you could be that's just different and interesting We're from all over the world. And I would like to hear from you in the chat. Tell me where you're from. You can hear me, but not the train. And I, did I say wave collapse function again? Oh, I said it wrong again. Oh, yeah. The whistle was silent. That's insane. Wow, the A, okay, hold on. Hold on, everybody. We're going to, uh, we're going to make something happen here. That is completely insane. Uh, I'm going to disable the futuristic high-tech artificial intelligence train whistle suppression engine that I am running. Uh, I see we've got South Africa, we've got Ethiopia, the, <laughs> India, Indonesia. This is incredible. And, and to think that I was like, I spent, by the way, I, all of my prep time, if there ever was any prep time for me live streaming, was spent me working on a message saying I'm not able to live stream today. And then I was like, oh, I just have to do it. It doesn't matter. I have between 9.45 a.m. and 11.45 a.m. free, even though I'm unprepared, I don't know how to code a thing that I might like to code. I have a, uh, I don't know what to do, but I, I have a list of things because I was streaming on Twitch yesterday and I made a list of things that I would do today. So hold on, I've got to get rid of this France, Nepal, Argentina, New Jersey, Venezuela, Nigeria, Brooklyn, New York. Hello, okay, Brooklyn. Uh, 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 I am not in Brooklyn, New York at the moment, although that is where I do consider my home to Kentucky, USA, Chris Sears. Hello, Denmark. Oh, whoops, hold on. Uh, uh, whoa. Oh, now I'm getting some weird echo sound. Oh, oh, I, I think I have the monitor on and it's coming out. Okay, hold on. Boston, sorry everybody, this is too much. Where's my production team to help me navigate all this? I gotta turn the echo reduction off, noise suppression, so you can hear this. Just could you please s stop distracting me with all of the amazing places you are around the world? Uh, NVIDIA bro broadcast. Uh, sorry for the, sorry for the uh, focus issues. I can't, I can't make it happen. Where is the software? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Well, can I do this? Okay, the noise removal is gone, but the echo removal is still on. 
So let's see how this goes. Ready, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the coding train. Okay, so I've got to um, do something. I've got a guest coming on in a minute. Uh, before I get to that, let me thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Do you like learning? Do you like the coding train? Guess what? I think you're also going to like Brilliant. It's a website. There's an app. It's just got all of these courses and interactive lessons. The thing is, the thing that I like to say about Brilliant, which I think is really important, is that you're watching me. And I'm here tucking, 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 waving my arms around, trying to get you excited about code and different things you might want to learn. That's great. That's a thing. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching. But one of the real, uh, real ways to learn, I think, is to just get your hands in there to try it yourself. Um, and that's what I try to encourage you to do. Watch the video, try it yourself. But another way to do that is through interactive lessons online. And I, I can't really think of a better platform than Brilliant to do that. So you can uh, sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. That lets them know that you found it through me. There's lots of stuff you can do for free on the website. And then if you want to get the premium subscription, which unlocks all of their courses, there's a really good neural networked one. There's a really good like algorithm fundamental one. Um, you can uh, purchase a premium subscription and the first 200 people to do so will get 20% uh, off. So thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring the coding train today. I'll come back in the middle. Somebody remind me at around maybe in an hour <laughs> to look at the Brilliant website a bit more. All right, now let me move that. Um, did you all hear the train whistle? Did you all hear the train whistle? That's what I would like to know. And while uh, while you're waiting for the train whistle, I am going to bring in our guest. Oh my goodness, I have so many messages. Uh, <laughs> does, okay, somebody list for me in the chat the things you need on a Seder plate, because that'll help. I know there's a shank bone. There's an orange. An orange is a new thing on a Seder plate, which uh, we do in my familia. Um, okay, but wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, oh, no, I, I got to put the Passover stuff away. I got to let in our guest here. Um, so hold on. I'm going to... Um, uh, the audio is... Okay. Uh, hello, Saber. Your audio is going straight through to the broadcast, just so you know. Uh, so before you say anything, you don't want anybody to hear like, Dan, yeah, that shirt is awful. Why are you wearing it? Or something like that. <laughs> um, but actually, could you just speak? I don't, your video is not up yet, but if you would just say hello, I can see if the audio is coming through. Oh, so ironically enough, the audio is not coming through. So let me fix that. No, no, hold on. It, it might be my headphones. No, no, no. Your audio is coming through to me. It just wasn't going to the stream, and now it is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... Um, I think if I press this button here, aha, yes, uh, whoops. Uh, I've, I just, I think, inadvertently revealed my the Zoom meeting ID, but don't worry, there's a waiting room. So all the people will start trying to get into the waiting room. So you're now you're <laughs> seeing me here uh, talking to Saber. I, um, Saber's from the Processing Foundation. Uh, we've known each other for many years. Worked. I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to get to participate in a lot of different initiatives that Saber has organized like uh, Creative Coding Fest, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many have there been? Uh, almost ten, I think. Almost if ten. I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, so, can everybody hear Saber? Okay. Yeah, people are saying it's fine in the chat. So, um, I think what I'd like to let Saber do is tell you about a few things that are going on with the Processing Foundation. If you're not familiar with the Processing Foundation processingfoundation.org. I can bring the website up while Saber is talking. And um, it's an it's a organization that I've been involved with for uh, almost 20 years now, although it hasn't existed for 20 years, so that's impossible. <laughs> but you know, the software was existed before the foundation anyway. Um, and so there's a bunch of things going on that I want people to hear about that you can apply for, that you can get involved for. And Saber, um, as the uh, education community director, is that the right, uh, is is a great person to tell you about this stuff. So I'm going to, I I, can't, I have a problem with stopping talking, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I can mute my microphone, actually. I can just mute it um, and let, uh, let Saber take it away for a few minutes. Sure. Uh, thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me on uh, this morning. Um, hi, everyone on the coding train, um, longtime listener and myself. Um, uh, I want to share a couple of programs that are coming up uh, that you can apply to work with us uh, that'll happen this summer. They're really exciting, and I would love for uh, this community uh, to put in applications if they haven't. The first one is Google Summer of Code, and I, let me see if I can, 
oh, I can't share my screen, but um, maybe Dan can pull it up. Uh, Yeah, totally. Yeah, so um, Google Summer of Code is an opportunity to uh, contribute to open source development. Uh, Google will fund your time. We will provide mentorship and community, and you get to work on some of our uh, software projects. And that runs uh, this summer. The application deadline is coming up really soon. It's in uh, four days on April 19th. Uh, so if you're interested in Google Summer of Code, uh, you know, definitely go to the website that Dan's showing. Uh, you can also jump to our discourse, which is a place where you can discuss your ideas. And then please put an application. Uh, if you have questions about how to do any of that, you can send me an email at sabrevprocessing.org. I'll put that in the coding train chat in a, in a minute after that. Um, and uh, excitingly for this uh, project, uh, Google Summer of Code, they've uh, expanded eligibility, which is one reason why I wanted to sort of let people know all over again about it. Uh, so the only requirement is you have to be 18 and above, um, you have to be above age of 18 and new to open source. Uh, there's a couple of minor eligibility requirements beyond that, but it really offers a lot of folks a chance to get involved with us. So I hope um, if software development's of interest to you, you uh, look into this. Uh, April 19th is the application deadline. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, this um, also happens every year, um, is the Processing Foundation Fellowship. Uh, this one is uh, due on May 1st. Um, what is the Processing Foundation Fellowship? Um, I think of it as a way to like either build something for our community or with our community. And there's a bunch of priority areas that we have identified, things like AI, accessibility, continuing support, which means that you're gonna take one of our old projects and kind of continue to build on it. Uh, ecology uh, has been added this year. And uh, beyond that, you can also seek to make educational materials, which would be a teaching fellow. Um, then you'd work with me and some of our teacher mentors, and we would uh, support you in making education materials and putting them out to the world. This also comes with a stipend and mentorship and a community. Um, what else did I want to say about that? I think that's kind of it. Oh, if we're to apply to that one, you would just go to the Processing Foundation website and fellowship and apply there. Um, and you have about you know two weeks left for that. So also reach out uh, both to me or directly to the foundation, uh, foundationofprocessing.org, if you have questions about uh, the fellowship. I think that's it. Oh, uh, Creative Coding Fest, I think we're going to do another one uh, virtually uh, this spring. Um, this is where we bring educators and students together and uh, basically like a mini version of coding train with like 45 minute workshops from educators, a chance to uh, get your hands dirty, meet some of the people that uh, are teaching this stuff uh, and learn some uh, little work, you know, some uh, how, to, how to do a couple of projects. Um, and what details are still being figured out. If you're interested in that, also email me, starboroprocessing.org. So that's the three things, Google Summer of Code, Processing uh, Fellowship, and CC Fest. Um, how's that, Dan? Did I, did that I was perfect. get it all done? Um, <laughs> only thing that I would add is that, because as I was yeah. scrolling through the website, a great, um, great thing that you can do is check out the Processing Foundation's Medium page, which has a lot of blog posts about previous fellowships and previous Google Summer of Code projects, and that will give you an idea of things that people have done in the past that you might want to continue or just understand sort of what the scope is, what's a reasonable scope, and how people have sort of organized their thinking around different projects they've developed. So that would be here. I'm on the Processing Foundation website under fellowships. Right, actually, right here, you can just see uh, view the fellows from 2021 and 2020. But if I go over to the Medium page, we'll see there's an open uh, post about the open call, and then there's lots of uh, wonderful posts about different things that people have done uh, in the past, digital accessibility, uh, P5 Alive, um, three-layer cake, <laughs> CS cake, that's brilliant, uh, internationalization support, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, um, Obaro asks in the chat, are, th are these opportunities remote? And uh, the answer to that is a distinct yes. Yes. So, yeah. um, you know, in, in, in the olden days, we used to try to do a lot of uh, physical get togethers if there was a group of people in a sort of like one part of the world that were relatively near each other. Maybe that's a thing we could do. We want to foster community as much as possible. But absolutely, there is no physical location requirement 
uh, for you to do this. There might be some eligibility requirements, like Saber uh, mentioned, that are Google's um, eligibility requirements for their program. The fellowship is open to anyone anywhere in the world, as far as I know. <laughs> um, but um, um, so just check all those eligibility requirements. But yes, you don't have to be in person for any of this. Um, just checking the chat. I don't see any other questions. So um, I'm going to I can let uh, Saber go on with uh, their day. And um, I thank you so much for being here. Oh, so but if people have questions, um, uh, can they? Uh, um, what's the best way for them to contact you? The email you suggested. Email, or? email is great. Yeah, cyber yeah. at processing, and then a general question would be foundation at processing. Right. Uh, would be uh, either. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on, Dan. Uh, excited to see what you make today. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And, All right. And I'm going to watch uh, Severance this weekend, Dan. If, ah, okay. Oh, oh, oh well, you could just text me all weekend with all of your takes because I'm 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 obsessed. So I'll uh, uh, well I'll have plenty to say about that soon enough. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dan. Bye bye. Bye. All right, I'm just taking a peek at the chat. Let me get myself back here. How do you add the subtitles? Actually, this is something that I'm really hoping to improve. Uh, subtitles, I'm just using Google's automated um, subtitles for live streams. For videos, I have them professionally captioned or I do some editing of them myself or somebody uh, um, who works on Coding Train things uh, helps me with that. But um, yeah, if you uh, are a, um, a subtitle user, I mean, uh, I, I watch a lot of shows with subtitles, although I my hearing is, um, as far as I know, pretty reasonably fine. <laughs> um, but and if you have uh, feedback or thoughts about how the content I'm doing can be made more accessible, um, please tweet at me, email me, daniel at thecodingtrain.com. Um, I would love to hear from you. Okay, can you restart your neural networks from scratch series? It's probably not gonna happen because <laughs> I have too much to do. All right, let me talk to you very briefly about what's on my list. Uh, and let me check, I, I, I think the Twitter poll I put up ended. So um, let me just look here under my profile. I've got like, uh, oh, well, I guess, I guess the people have spoken. And I said wave collapse function again. It's wave function collapse. This is not a good sign for me trying to do a coding challenge today. Okay, um, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the actual live stream poll, which I'm going to end. Um, yeah, all right. Whew. All right, people, we're doing it. So I have something to say, which is that, um, I mean, I, the problem is I have some other stuff on this list. Okay, let's give me, let's say, let's say I have to start wave function collapse by 10.30 at the very latest, no matter what else is going on. So that is 19 minutes from now. I have to start it. Um, I'm just looking to see, hopefully there's some moderators in the chat um, who can help with any of the spam here. Justin, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm trying to match your name and your chat message with your Twitter post. <laughs> it's a little hard for me to do that. Okay. But um, I, I, even though all I want to do is talk about severance, at least take a peek, by the way. I, I, I want to work on this during a live stream. I'll probably do it on Twitch. Um, but uh, take a look at the UUR bot, uh, which is a new bot that I've released on Twitter. Um, you know, just just... Some people follow the bot, not naming any names. <laughs> okay, I'm very proud of myself. Oh, I'm very proud of myself. The crows off in the building of my, the crows on the roof of my building scream like the sea, and I know there's a storm coming. I have lots to do with this bot. If you want to contribute, get in touch. All right. Let's look at what else is on this list. So I wanted to talk about some upcoming plans I have to reboot my Twitter and Discord bot series, but Wave function collapse. So that's I'm just going to put it. Just going to mention that and put a check mark next to it. Um, I want to relearn Apple II Basic because <laughs> I'm planning to do some videos with my Apple II Plus. Oh, I have something exciting to show you, which I'll show you in a second. But oh, I for, did I put that on the list? Uh, I don't think I. Um, I don't put that. I don't think I put that on the list. But it's not going to happen today because wave function collapse. <laughs> the collapse of the 
coding train function is imminent. But I do have something I really feel like I should do live, but I'm going to punt it till later. But let me mention it. Um, and then maybe maybe you maybe you are all okay with just putting your trust and faith in me, or maybe I'll just do a Twitch stream just for this. Um, but um, I put out a survey. I cannot believe uh, to get some feedback about the coding train. I am compiling the results and reading through the survey. It's incredible. There were over two thousand responses to this, which is just blows my mind. Um, and there was an option in the survey. Unfortunately, it's closed now. So sorry, sorry for you if you're just hearing about this. I'll do another one uh, where you could enter to win a sticker giveaway. So I was going to write a little P5 sketch to pick the winners um, and do that live. But wave function collapse. Wave function collapse. Wave function collapse. Wave, say it with me, everybody. Wave function collapse. Could everybody just like... Get behind me and all just stand all. Everybody stand behind me and cheer my name as I'm working on wave function collapse. That's a severance reference. I'll try to stop making everything a severance reference. Okay. Uh, you should talk about severance. Who cares about it? So first of all, I would just get this out of the way. If you're interested, I, I, have, I have six more minutes before I promised I would start. <laughs> I gotta have to erase the whiteboard though, so that's good. And I gotta set up my code. So really, I have like two more minutes. Then I promise no more severance content. But for those of you who are interested, one, check out, uh, first of all, listen to the podcast, uh, which had a nice interview with uh, Michael Chernus, uh, who is the inspiration, or his character in Severance is the inspiration for, you know, follow Dr. Amanda R on Twitter also, the um, le world's leading Severance social media influencer. <laughs> um, the UUR bot, check out, uh, inspired by the character uh, uh, Dr. Rick and Laszlo Hale. I'm um, working on it. It's sort of an alpha, but people found it. I mean, I put it out there, and so it's no longer alpha. People are reading the tweets. Um, and then also check out uh, lumen-industries.com, where you can enjoy uh, macro, macro data refinement to your heart's content. Uh, and I would sit here and do this for hours and hours like I do in my, uh, that's why I don't prepare for the coding train anymore. All I do is refine the data. Wave function collapse, wave function collapse. I got it, I got it. I'm gonna just keep saying it. Um, and if you wanna to contribute to either of these projects, uh, github.com slash shiftman uh, is where you will find the, U, the UUR bot. It's probably, it's a recent repository. Um, there it is, UUR bot. It, it needs a lot of work. Um, I haven't piled, uh, compiled issues and things that I want to do or written a readme, so I need to do all that. And then you can also go to github.com slash Lumen Industries. That's the uh, company that I'm hoping will, will hire me. Uh, maybe I'm not hoping. I think that's a bad idea, actually. But um, this one is a bit more organized with a readme, and uh, there are some active pull requests going on and a bunch of issues of things that are to be implemented. So. Frau plays it every day. Oh, you made me so happy. That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. And it will be, I'm going to be happy later today, even, even when this uh, uh, wave function collapse thing goes horribly wrong. Because here's the thing. I'm going in totally cold, which is, and this is not an easy just like, oh, I already sort of know this, or like I understand how it works, so I'll just sort of figure it out as I go. All right, so I'm gonna move this over here and close a bunch of windows. We're gonna get started. Uh, I do need to look at the um, brilliant website uh, in the middle of the stream, so I can't forget that. I'm just closing all these windows. It's also, it's cold in here. It's such a warm, beautiful day, and I, um, but this this uh, room really, my hands are, but I think cold is good. It's gonna, I'm gonna keep my energy up. <laughs> there will be a, Musical dance experience to be had. Jeez. Oh, help! Help me, somebody! I'm in the country, in the boonies, and there's just trees around me, and I have all these lights and cameras and people watching. What am I to do? Okay. Um, I think that... Okay, so wave function collapse. We're going to go to the uh, source. I know you're not seeing my screen right now. That's going to... Um, I want to go to the, uh, this is it, okay. <sighs> Bringing this back. 
Um, okay. Now, I, something that's really driving me crazy is that uh, my audio is being monitored by, uh, and it's coming out. I got to turn, I got to mute the PC. Okay, I think it should be fine. <laughs> Simon says, I literally in the last hour, tried to figure out how the algorithm works. How did that go? See, the thing is, this is a bad idea. This is not realistic for me to do in the next hour and 25 minutes. So this part of me is like, oh, I should save this for a day when I have almost a full day to stream. Or maybe I should like do a little bit more research first or and just do something else today. But you, you, the people have spoken and I said I was going to do it. So I, I have a feeling I'm going to go in as if. So the process that I have now is I live stream trying to work through some kind of algorithm or project. And then I, while I'm doing that, I record everything to disk, and I have something exciting to show you. Oh, <laughs> two minutes left, uh, um, and which I'll get to in a second. Um, and um, then that gets edited together, um, you know, with some cutting out some extraneous stuff, adding some additional like animations or explanations if I record them later to try to make a somewhat coherent. <laughs> Somewhere between 20 and 60 minutes is sort of my goal video called the uh, coding challenge wave function collapse. So I just don't think it's realistic for me to do the whole thing today, but this is what I feel like. Why don't I get it started? See how it goes. I can return and record the rest later, or I could just come back and do the whole thing over at some point and I'll have had a little bit of practice. I think that's what I have to do. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, all right, I'm just taking a peek at the chat. Sounds like a plan. Yep, right? Sounds like a plan. Ah, th this whistle, this, you're hearing the sound now, right? It's incredible. And it doesn't have any echo. Isn't that amazing? All right, let me show you my exciting thing. I see that it is 1020. Uh, let's see if this works. Ah, so I'm in a new studio. And I put a camera over there, uh, which now you can see, hi, that's the wide shot. So this is, by the way, I wanted to just introduce you to my new setup. I mean, it's the same setup that I've been using for years and years and years. I just keep remaking it. And I have this new uh, big space where I'm living now. Um, and I've been uh, doing a lot of work on it and got some new sheetrock and some, painted some walls and put down a, a epoxy, a blue epoxy on the floor. You can see that I have legs. This is a nice standing desk. Uh, this is where the streaming PC is over here. Um, you can see where the cameras are. Um, and this is the whiteboard camera, which I think is uh, working pretty well these days. I do need to erase this. Um, and I bought, I went to ye old hardware store and I have a righty board microfiber eraser cloth. This is all the content that you signed up for today. Oh. Come on, you can't open it. Ah. <laughs> okay, wait, I think I have a scissors somewhere. Everybody, let me come back over here. I'm just curious to see if people have any... Uh, Mystery solved. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm uh, got my beautiful. Oh, there's two of them, which is good because I wanted to get a microfiber cloth to clean my Apple II Plus computer, which unfortunately the camera is not pointed at the wide shot. Um, if you missed that stream, oh, good news by the way for those of you who caught my stream when I was uh, building and well, not building, but I was re rebuilding and turning on. Um, my Apple II Plus computer for the first time in uh, probably, I don't know, let's say, probably, let's say the last time it was used was 1990, if I, if I had to guess, so 30 plus years. <laughs> oh, we got it. By the way, this is the to-do list for the Macrodata refinement. You'd think I would have thought to erase the whiteboard before I came in here. I think I'm going to need some water. Um, excuse me while I go get some water. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to wet this cloth slightly. Oh, no, you know what I have? Because, oh, I have a, um, uh, 
<laughs> I don't know if you can see me. I should put the wide shot back on. But I have a um, like a wet wipe type thing. Oh, I just took too many. So this should this should do the trick really fast. Oh my goodness. Yeah. By the way, this is uh, my daughter's drawing. She was in here. Drew that. So sorry. Uh, maybe I'll leave that there. Now I guess I have to. I guess, I'm going to erase it. She'll be fine. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that did the trick. I don't. <laughs> I don't have a trash can. All right. Now I'm going to. Maybe I shouldn't. Well, caution to the wind here. There we go. Okay. The next thing I need to do is set up a code file um, and let me bring myself over here. Oh, I need to, I need to, I definitely need to make sure I'm recording to disk. So please bear with me for a second while I pull that up. Uh, okay, hold on, it's coming. All right. Uh, no, remind me later about updating. Oh, and uh, you know what? Just start recording. Okay, so that's recording. I'm recording to disk now. Um, Okay, let me move some things to the side here that are unnecessary. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm <laughs> looking at my phone, which is a terrible idea, but you never know. The, one, the thing is, I was going to stream this afternoon, and I had like a ton of, I, I thought I had like three, a three or four hour block, but I forgot because of the holidays. I have to pick up my kids from school early. Uh, I've got, um, so there's, I got some family stuff going on. So this was my only free time and it's, it's dwindling fast because as I don't know who it was who said it in the chat, uh, here we are. Um, <laughs> is the red theme on your browser new? I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I have no idea where that came from, but great question. Uh, <laughs> uh, Justin, that's that's nice of you to say. I hope that your daughter is enjoys watching and maybe is interested in programming someday or already is programming. Okay, I've got to find a good whiteboard marker. And let's, okay, let's go, whoops. Let's start setting up. So I. Um, I think that I should use for this, um, I'm not going to use the P5 web editor. This feels like a complex enough project that having a bit more space and making sure I have easy access to the JavaScript console is going to be important. So let's go to the desktop. Um, let's make a directory called wave function collapse. Um, and let's open that up in Visual Studio Code. And so um, my workflow videos could use a refresher as everything could, <laughs> but um, this is kind of my uh, code editor of choice these days. Uh, and I'm just gonna have two files, an HTML file and a sketch.js file. And the way I like to write my HTML file <laughs> is by going to the P5 web editor and taking this and then uh, pasting it here. Whoops, that's in sketch.js, wrong file. Pasting it here, and then going in sketch.js and uh, putting in a setup function. And a draw function. Uh, and we'll just give us a nice gray background to start. And then making sure that, uh, it, oh, and then I would like to run, uh, um, I've been using more recently the live server, um, which um, does a good job of just auto refreshing when I change the code, although I don't always want that to happen, so I might go back. Actually, you know what, I don't like that. <laughs> because I like to be able to dramatically refresh and restart the sketch myself. <laughs> so let's go to this. 
Okay, that's fine. And let me just make sure that uh, it's picking up the new code. All right, we're ready to go. Um, I would also like to filter out the warnings. Is this, he, <laughs> the thing is, like, I made that April Fool's video with the anal retentive coder, um, which, um, like, four people watched. <laughs> And then, like, ever since I made that, I realized, like, oh, my God, that's me. That was not a joke. That's what I do all the time. I'm like, okay, no, I can't have these yellow warnings here. Oh, my goodness. It's looking for a style sheet. We must fix that. And I never get to anything. <sighs> um, all right. I do not need the sound library. And I also, that's fine. No, the warnings are gone now. Okay. Um, I can close this. All right. I'm going to have a little, I'm going to try to warm up. Okay, I see. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I read that link. Um, so there's a lot of really great resources. Let me just jump into this video. And I'm, I apologize. I have to um, blow my nose. <laughs> I think allergy season uh, is is happening for me. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I'm just going to dive in. I'm recording to disk. Um, um, and um, so I'm going with my plan here. It is what it is. Thank you for being here. I mean, I should, the live stream, I, the other thing is, ah, I mean, part of, mm, here we go. Ready, everybody? Hello and welcome to a coding challenge video. I'm Dan and I am dreadfully unprepared for this. Let me, so the topic is, oh, it's an incredible topic. It's called wave function collapse. And I'm gonna put up a bunch of images and different things and resources and links that you, they'll all be in the description that you can go to to read about. There are just so many examples of this incredible procedural generative algorithm all over the internet. It's a new algorithm. Uh, it was started, it was, I think, 2000, the origins are 2016 by, on the GitHub username is MXGMN. Um, so all the proper credits will be, again, in the video description. But if you're here, to watch a proper tutorial about wave function collapse, uh, maybe go back to your search engine and <laughs> type in wave function collapse tutorial again, because I don't think this is gonna be it, because I'm going in almost entirely cold. I have read one or two, one to three web pages about this algorithm. I have seen many examples of what people have done with this algorithm, and I um, am sitting here staring at the GitHub repository for the original implementation, which includes a nice explanation that I am going to attempt to follow in the next, I don't know, 400 hours. And to be truth, I'm recording this live right now. There's people watching. Uh, would I might get some help from the chat. You know, you tune into my live streams if you want to participate in that. And uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm probably later on going to be wearing something entirely different because I'm going to have to come back and finish this another time. I don't know why I'm trying to predict everything. You, you, I could just redo this introduction later and when I know what happened and then I wouldn't have to have to predict it. Eh. Let's, let me try to describe to you. Oh, okay. The, this desk. <laughs> Gotta lock these wheels better. <clears throat> let me try to describe to you in a very sort of like loose terms my understanding of what wave function collapse is. And I'm going to use my whiteboard for that. Uh, I want to, there already is a processing four out. It's I think alpha or beta, but go check it out. All right. Um, I'm, how was that? Uh, that was a fine intro, right? Mathieu will do wonders with that. I just want to make sure I'm actually still recording to disk. Yeah, I think I, need, I can stop worrying about that. The whiteboard camera, I just, I know, I'm sorry, but it's a little bit askew. So I just want to fix that. Although, is that, did I do that on purpose? Oh, I did that on purpose so that I can stand over on this side and the edge of it is here. That's fine. All right, I think it's fine. Um, all right. <laughs> Hands are cold. Oh, you don't see the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a way, I should just, when I'm doing the whiteboard, I should probably go to this. 
Uh, and in fact, I could actually just have this up. Part of me wants to do it this way, but um, I think it's good for you to be able to see uh, the full picture. And I've lost the chat. Uh... <laughs> yeah, OK. Again, I don't really know this algorithm. So I'm probably going to get some things wrong. That's OK. Everything's going to be OK. All right, hold on. The idea of the wave function collapse algorithm is to look at a particular image it's often something abstract like this analyze the patterns that appear in this particular image and use those patterns to generate a new image in the same vein or style of this one. But the amazing thing about this algorithm, it, th this, I mean, <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> this might not seem like such a, this might seem like a sort of everyday creative coding activity to you. After all, there's all these new kinds of machine learning and neural network and AI style transfer and strand transfer, style transfer, and uh, style GAN, and all these ways to generate images from one source as an inspiration. But this is actually not using any of that. It is an incredibly, um, I, I mean, this is going to be really hard to implement, <laughs> like uh, highly sophisticated in its sort of terminology and its approach. But ultimately, at its core, it's actually kind of a simple idea. And it has to do with this idea of tiles. And what I would like to call states, although I don't know if this is entirely used as the proper term in the uh, original algorithm itself. And then the idea of collapsing these states. Um, there's a term that comes up at, in, as entropy, and this is from information theory. It's sort of like one of these weird, like, nobody knows what entropy means, so we'll just use entropy when we want to, like, sound like we're doing something smart. <laughs> but um, and actually, if you want to like learn more about entropy, I would suggest to you three blue, one brown's videos about the Wordle game, which has some really interesting parallels to some things that are going on in wave function collapse, I think. But the idea here is that entropy, we can think of as a term for the amount of information. Oh, I, I know it. I know it's a great example <laughs> because I read about it in somebody's post online. <clears throat> Let's say we're playing a Sudoku. And I, um, how do you play Sudoku? <laughs> I think you have nine by nine. I mean, well, okay. There's more. <laughs> I'm going to fill in some. Okay. All right. All right. Let's say we're not playing Sudoku. <laughs> we're designing a Sudoku board. And the idea of Sudoku, right, is that we need to have all 
10 digits, zero through nine, present and in columns and rows, but I'm simplifying here. Let's just say it's like the simplest game of Sudoku you could ever possibly play, which is that I somehow need all 10 digits in this three by three grid. So right now, at present, each grid has 10, each, each cell has 10 possible states. The entropy of any given cell right now is a measure of how many, how many remaining state possibilities could go in that spot. So right now, every single cell has the same measure of entropy, same amount of entropy, 10 possible states. If I were to put the, an eight here, Suddenly, well, the entropy goes down to nothing because this has been collapsed. That's the idea of collapsing the, these range of possibilities down into one. It's decided. And then the entropy is less for all of the others because there's only nine possibilities left. Now, this is, again, a very crude and simplistic example because there's not a lot of variations of the sort of span of possibilities across a larger space that you might have in a full Sudoku game, but you're starting to get the idea of what does it mean to build a pattern out of tiles on a grid where each tile has a certain number of possible configurations that could go into it. And as we start to place those tiles, they reduce the number of possibilities in the neighboring tiles. This to me is the way that I think of understanding the wave function collapse algorithm. And just taking a short break here. Nine left. Nine left. One through nine. Oh, you can't. Oh, <laughs> oh, that whole explanation was wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm the worst. What is three times three? <laughs> it's, I didn't really like it anyway. So, oh, oh geez. So let me ask you all a question. Uh, I, I think I should use the the I think I should use a different example anyway. That was a little bit weird, um, and you can see how I'm not going to get through this today. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, let me ask you a question. Um, was that a reasonable explanation of entropy? The um, entropy in a state function. Uh, okay. Uh, entropy, uh, what I'm looking for is information theory. Uh, just to make sure I'm kind of describing this correctly. Uh, oh, I've been on this website many a time. Uh, more generally, quantify the information event in a random variable. Um, Entry provides a measure of the average amount of information needed to represent an event drawn. So that's like, um, um, yeah, this is uh, average amount of information needed. So higher entropy means more possibilities, right? Right? I got that right. It was a spot on explanation of entropy. <laughs> okay, that's lucky of me. Okay. So I, should I go for the Sudoku thing again? But obviously talk about the nine numbers, not the 10. I'm just so, here's the thing. I've been, it's been like beaten into me over years and years and years of programming with arrays that I've got to talk about index values zero through nine, which is a total of 10. And I just like borked my brain there. Um, all right, um, let's just try that again. Um, because that's not going to go, that's not going to fly for, uh, it's a funny live stream moment, but, and we could, oh, also this looks a little blurry, the whiteboard. Let me see if I can focus it a little bit better. I think that's better. Let me have a look. Oh yeah, that looks better. Why not use Wordle? Oh yeah, why not use Wordle? Let's use Wordle. Let's use Wordle. Oh, this is so exciting. I can use Wordle. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> the problem with Wordle is 
I've, I've been like, ah, is it like universally? The thing is, like, I, I'm going down a road of, all right, let's, fine, let's use Word. I don't The Wordle, I think, is too, it's interesting. It's too sophisticated. Like, I'm going to have to explain Wordle. So I got very excited about that. But I think I should just stick with the Sudoku. Um, unnecessary close-up. Sorry about that. Ten. No, empty. All right. Now, now I'm still okay. Wordle is a great idea. All right. All right. Let's 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 try it. Okay. Wordle has nothing to do. No, it, Wordle is it is is so related. But I think Sudoku is a little bit closer in the sense that. Um, I think Sudoku is maybe a bit more universally known. Um, and I could actually, I could make, you know what, I, to make this more clear, I think if I drew a slightly larger Sudoku board, it would actually make more sense. So let's do that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Shoot. See, this is why I, <sighs> okay. There's no way I'm getting finishing this today, so I'm probably going to be redoing this anyway. What time is it? Yeah. Uh, 10.45. Okay, 15 minutes here before I at least need a little break. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's take an example from... a. Let's take the classic game Sudoku as an example. That is basically the worst regular grid anybody has ever drawn in the history of YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> the idea of Sudoku is that we have a giant grid of numbers and any one of these cells in the grid could have a number one through nine in it. And every single row, every single column, as well as every single three by three, if I could draw this correctly, oh, let's fix that in post. Every single three by three subgrid has all nine digits in it, unique nine digits in it. So how does this relate to wave function collapse and the concept of entropy? <laughs> entropy did I mention, say this? Now I'm lost my rhythm of what I said before and not what's changing, but alas. Entropy is a measure of the possibility space of every single one of these cells. Entropy in the information theory sense is a measure of the possibility space of every one of these cells. So right now, the entropy is uniform. Every cell could have nine possible digits in it. If I were to start building a Sudoku board, I could just pick one randomly and pick a random number. Maybe I pick the number eight and I plop it in here. Now, the entropy has changed for every single one of these cells remaining in this row and every single one of the cells remaining in this column, as well as all of the cells in this top right three by three grid, right? They only have now eight possibilities left, while the entropy for here is nine. And if I were to put the number two here, suddenly now the entropy is reduced for these cells. So as the entropy goes down, we have fewer, fewer possible things that could fit in a given cell. Collapsing the cell is the act of picking its number, its state. It's done, it's collapsed. The goal of Sudoku is to use information that you have gathered, uh, the entropy of every single state, 
the entropy of every single cell, start putting all the numbers around until you can solve it. And if you find a, a cell suddenly that has no possibilities, then you've done something wrong and you need to go backwards and try again. This is exactly what I am going to attempt to do with the wave function collapse algorithm as applied to pixels. What if instead of every tile in a, so, uh, so if we take a graphics canvas, that's say 400 by 400 pixels, what if every single tile could have a particular color in it or a particular grouping of pixels, a pattern, so to speak? What if I took that pattern from maybe this source image? So what if I took this pattern, just this little section of pixels, and decided to put it here in the corner? I've collapsed this one section of this particular image. Now, if I could somehow, based on collapsing this one, reduce the entropy for its neighbors, then I could select a particular tile. Maybe I only look at tiles that can go next. <clears throat> if I... <clears throat> If I've analyzed this image for what kind of patterns exist next to this one and only allowed me myself to pick those to either to put adjacent to this one, then I could collapse those and it would ripple out. I could keep collapsing others around it. Um. Okay. Um, actually, there is this amazing demo where is that uh, was sent to me shoot let's is it here hold on uh, let me just find this in my direct messages um I, I feel like I kind of botched that explanation, but that's fine. Um, just give me a second here. Hello, Discord, where are you? Uh, okay, great. Um, all right, I'm pulling this up. This is an inter... Um, ah, right. Ah, that's, that's such a good... Dan writes in the chat. Um, let me... Uh, 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 let me just read that. Entropy of certain cells re will reduce, which also causes the total entropy of the grid to reduce. Um, so I'm just going to sort of say that. <laughs> as the entropy of diff as the entropy of different cells is reduced, the entropy of the total system also reduces until we find a solution. And by the way, this is exactly how you might approach an algorithm to solve Sudoku or to solve the game Wordle. Again, check out 3 Blue one browns video on that. This is just so related and it's got its tentacles everywhere in the kind of stuff that I'm expecting if you're watching this video, you're interested in. This here is an incredible interactive demonstration of wave function collapse. What it's showing is this source image, these pixel tiles that you can find in the Im sorry. What it's showing is a source image divided into a set of tiles, and each tile has neighbors next to it. If I were to go here and pick like, okay, I want this particular so okay, sorry. <clears throat> Try this again. Don't forget. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> no, uh, uh, eight minutes. I'm going to do my, I'm going to take my short break. Okay. 
<clears throat> when can I come back and finish this? Is the question. I want to do this today. I have to go now. I mean, I should check my messages. A small chance. I have something at noon. There's a small chance. Uh, uh, I don't see any of that. Um, I'll, I'll check that again at 11.30 just to make sure my thing at noon is still happening. Okay, I'm going to stop. Okay. <clears throat> this is an incredible interactive demonstration. Oscar Stahlberg. This is an incredible interactive demonstration of the algorithm by Oscar Stahlberg. Yes, I think I said that right. We have a source image. It has an entire set of tiles from that source image, and we're going to build a larger image out of these same tiles shrunk down. So I could start by picking any tile in the, this image over to the right uh, and copying over, let's say I want to copy over this solid brownish tile. And I want to do that in this one. So I hover over that tile and I select it. Now, because I selected, why did it make the tiles below it brown? I would have thought that wouldn't be possible because this would, uh, it allows it to repeat itself. Wait a second, somebody explain this to me. Because I, right? I mean, so for example, if I were redoing the, recreating the image, I would pick this one. And then now I have a reduced set of possibilities, like I could pick this one, and then I could pick this one. Why did this? Oh, that makes sense. Why then that would be that. But why underneath? Because wouldn't it show this one underneath? What am I missing? Um, what do these numbers mean? Oh. Eight, let's see. That's the number of the, t what do these numbers mean? Huh. Uh, does anybody, wait a second here, let me zoom in here. Oh no, this is different now. So this is showing the possible, the possible tile. I'm imagining these are the possible things that can be below it. And how do I know which is the ID for this? Like this is just saying the same one everywhere. I'm so confused. I'm looking at the chat. There's no block that has brown on top and something else on bottom. The numbers are color codes. Um, what am I missing here? Oh, it's the hex colors? I don't think so. Right? I thought, okay, let me reset this. So let's say I pick this particular tile. I'm so confused. Is it not actually, is this a pre, maybe this is a pre-generated, um, Um, maybe it's not actually pulling the adjacencies or, or is it using the, are there actually smaller, because is it's actually do is this doing the overlapping method? In which case I, it's not visually exactly this. It enforces matching colors across cell boundaries. Oh, is that all it's doing? So it's just looking for a cell that has the same color on the other side. I see. Um, check Discord. <laughs> okay, thanks, Simon. Uh, uh, The only possibility if there's a solid brown anywhere, if there's a solid brown below. Oh, okay. 
So, um, um, so yeah, I think this is doing a slightly different method than in my head I was imagining, which is that um, it is actually matching. Uh, this is pretty interesting. This is like a different way of doing it, which is really cool, which is that it's actually just listing the color that's on this border. And then the only things that can go above it are, so like for this particular tile, I got it. The only thing for this tile, the only things that can go below it are anything uh, that's brown. So this tile, by the way, has to have a brown tile above it to the left and to the right. So it can have this, it can have another. Oh, I got it now. Huh. Oh, wow. I should implement it like this. This is cool. This is not the way I was thinking of doing it. And, and Simon is pointing out, uh, it's been about an hour. Okay, I know. Thank you, Alec. Everyone's reminding me. Simon is pointing out, like I was going to, so the post that I was looking at yesterday on my Twitch stream, which, um, Um, which is this one, is a really excellent post. And it proposes, first, it, there is a simpler version of this idea, which um, uh, I was looking for a particular, which is actually on, uh, sorry, this page, which is just looking at um, this idea of a tile map generation. Okay, so that's actually, that's what, so maybe I should do it this way, which is what, um, all right, okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. There's the idea of the wave function collapse. And I, I, I'm clearly coming back and doing this another day, but let's see how this keeps going. But this is hopefully useful for all of you. We're, we're here in the moment. Let's just be here in the moment together and not worry about this video later that I want to make. This is all part of the process. And even if I just do a little bit today, I might, I, if I inspire you to like try it on your own or you want to send me some tips after and I'll come back and do it more, all that's great. So, um, but what I want to say is that I, 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 there are two versions of this algorithm. One which is just using straight tiles and one which is using overlapping tiles. Um, and I think there's like very specific terms for these, which I might not be getting exactly right. And the idea of the straight tiles is more like Sudoku in the sense that there are, I have nine possible kind of like tiles. And when I put one there, it uh, it reduces the possibilities that could go next to it because only certain possibilities can go next to it. And typically, like um, in this particular demonstration, uh, which is not this one, which is uh, this one, we might have some essentially pre-configured set of tiles with a list of possible neighbors. Um, and that's this is um, this is a nice way of do this is this is a uh, a simpler way to do it, but the issue with this is you've got to pre-design what the tiles and rules are. I mean, maybe I could analyze the last within this one. I could analyze the last row of pixel, last column or row of pixels to match. But essentially, I've got to build a JSON file or I think there's like examples of like XML files that list all the tiles and what their neighbors are. Whereas the overlapping model, uh, what it does is it takes an image and scans it and builds an array of tiles and then looks at neighbors. And the reason why it's called overlapping is because we're not, we're in addition to like taking this tile and looking at what's next to it, we'll just move one pixel over and take this tile, usually they're like three by three or whatever, and then look at the one next to it as well. So, I, I was all set yesterday to be like, okay, I've read this, I should just do the simple tiled model. And then part two, our coding challenge, uh, a coding challenge follow-up would be to then do the overlapping model, which yields you more exciting. I was like, kind of like, oh, can I take a picture of this shirt? 
and use it as like the tile generator. Um, so uh, the overlapping model is what you what sort of like feels more like magic because you just feed it an input and it analyzes it. Whereas the tiling model is more like I'm a game designer and I want to have like a, a, a world that has, you know, each cell could be, it's a 2D world and it could be brick. If I'm building like a platformer game, it could be brick or wall or like, I don't know what the pieces would be. So maybe what I need to do in order to do this video properly is actually design a set of tiles or use a pre-existing set of tiles because now I fully understand and this demonstration is so awesome I was playing with this last night and I don't think I really understood it I just was enjoying playing with it and now I do and this is just incredible like if I do this like look at all the different possible configurations that come out just from this particular design um, and um, so, um, uh, Justin writes, I'm looking at this from a game dev procedural dungeon generator. Um, and Simon is saying for tiled models, you can make models where you scan an example image. It's kind of like the game of life. Uh, every tile is a single pixel. Oh, so we could do, you know, that will work also. Um, just uh, so I could scan an image and have every, especially if the image had limited colors. Like if this is a full color image with uh, each tile could be a single pixel. That's kind of an interesting way of doing it. And then it only can have certain pixels next to it. All right. I'm going to have to come. So I'm hoping that this introduction is giving you something. Um, I'm going to talk about Brilliant in a moment and take a short break uh, and then come back and I'll have about a half an hour or so left. I'm going to sort of think about um, what I'm going to do, but clearly this was a, um, as I expected, uh, is not going to, in the next half an hour, lead to the full implementation of this. So um, let me... Um, I mean, a break will be good for all of us, and it'll help me do some thinking about this, and I'll read your comments in the chat. But since you're all here with me, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Brilliant! I talked about Brilliant at the beginning of the live stream. I don't know if you were there or not, so I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. Um, I make videos about different algorithms and concepts from math and science and art and all sorts of related topics. And you watch them and maybe you try to make something after watching them. That's a way to learn. And the important part of that is you trying it. And so Brilliant is, I think, the perfect companion complement to the stuff that I do here on The Coding Train in the sense that it is a website full. I'm gonna just pull up a video of one of them. This is the um, Logic course. It is a full of just many different courses around algorithms and computer science and math and physics and all of these topics. And you get to actually try stuff. Like you could learn code without knowing the syntax by pseudocode and manipulating um, different kind of problems. So learning logic, learning algorithm fundamentals in, in, through interactive lessons is just a wonderful way to learn. Um, I always have to mention um, the neural network course, which just like, you know, if I could imagine the perfect like demonstration of the act, the visual activity of a neural network of, of, of different videos that I've done using neural networks, it would be what's right here in this brilliant course. And so if you want a nice companion, if you're learning about machine learning, you've been watching some videos, you've been trying some Python libraries, maybe you've tried ML5JS, you want to get deeper into some of these concepts, the neural network course on Brilliant would be great for you. And sorry that it went to a black screen there. Um, let me just go back to my computer and pull up Brilliant. I think that I'm logged in. Uh, I am logged in, um, and um, actually, I was looking today at, um, so I, let me just quickly scan the courses so you can see, you know, there's so many, uh, you know, whenever I'm looking for a new idea for a coding challenge, I have this uh, list of ideas, like a lot of them are now coming from Brilliant, especially this beautiful geometry course, uh, the logic course I referenced. Um, it's great for parents, teachers. You know, I've been actually looking at this with my kids, which has been fun. But I did actually notice, <laughs> oh, it was, I guess, I don't know, this nine plus, I don't know why this popped up when I was looking at it the other day, because this is an older one. 
But um, oh, and I wonder if this also. But oh, there's a lot of stuff that deals with entropy and information theory, <laughs> like this one. So this is a challenge, right? It's possible to arrange five square tiles in numbers one, two, three, four, five into a plus, so that the sum of the three tile column and the sum of the three tile row are both equal to nine. So let's think about this for a second. If they have to equal to nine, the total of all the tiles, would it be 18? No, because there's a tile that is repeated. So the, the total of 18 plus 18, which is 36, well, it, the, the three has to go in the center, right? Because if I put the two in the center, there's no way I can make uh, a nine, like five and one is like to get, to get nine, I've got to do uh, four and like right, four and three. And then I can't get nine. Like the only way uh, to get nine is to put three in the center, four and two, because six and six, because I need six and six. Uh, plus, yeah, I, I'm like having trouble explaining why this is. My brain was working it out. But do you see the connection to entropy? <laughs> right. So like right now, in theory, without thinking about any of the rules of the system, the entropy uh, is, uh, you know, measure would be five possibilities for every cell. But if I look at the rules, the entropy of the center cell is not the same as the others. If there's only one possibility, it's three. And now I've reduced the entropy down to two uh, for each of the other, um, the other cells. So, you know, I could put um, a two here, and then that means a four has to, I have to collapse this to a four, or if I put a four here, this would have to collapse. Did I get this right? Let's just make sure. I mean, try it yourself by dragging the five number tiles into the plus. I've made... Correct. I guess I, I guess I did it and just marked it as correct. Um, explanation. Let's look at this. The sum of the row and the column is 18, and the sum of all the tiles. Oh, I, I'm such an idiot. I'm no, I'm not an idiot. I'm learning. See, it's don't don't say that. Don't be like me. Don't say that to yourself. <laughs> you are doing your best and trying, and we're all figuring this stuff out. Did you see how I messed up Sudoku earlier and I said there were 10 numbers? <laughs> Um, so, uh, yes, of course, adding up all of these gets 15, but I have to have nine plus nine is 18. 18 minus 15 is three. So three has to go in the center. So it's so lovely to see then to try it yourself, to figure it out, puzzle it out, even if you're just doing it sort of through intuition or some strange methodology and then see the explanation. So, uh, if you're, if you find this interesting, if you're enjoying this, um, please consider uh, signing up. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. Let's them know you found out about Brilliant from me. Um, and if you want to unlock all of the courses and everything they have to offer, the first 200 people to do so through that link will receive a 20% off discount. Okay, I'm going to take a very short break. Uh, if you got nothing to do, sign up during the break. Uh, let, let me know in the chat what you think might be the most effective use of the next 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and I will um, be back in, um, well, I guess I'm going to be back in four, four minutes. Okay, uh, let's put on some intermission music. And, uh, I'm going to give you just the uh, mute my microphone.
Sorry, the music is muted because I'm in the wrong. <laughs> in this view, all right. Let me just go to here. So now it's this is the intermission view. I'll, I'll pipe the audio from the music into that view later. But also, I'm, I, it's nice for me to off the camera. For me. I put up a poll. Um, I see everybody's voting for a makeup a tiling system. I really should pick the red. I, I, I shouldn't have made them. I shouldn't have made the. Um, I, sh I should have made the poll because I really feel like I should pick the sticker winners, but we'll see. hearing me and watching this right now. Okay, so sorry, I, I'm looking over here because that's where I have my monitor for the chat. What does make sticker winner mean? So I can understand why you're probably not interested in the me picking the sticker winners because you know the number of you who might have entered to win the stickers through the survey is, uh, I think I'll just do that. I'll, I'll do that separately. I'll just like Twitch stream for like 15 minutes and do it. I just, I don't know why, but I'm like hung up on the fact that I want people to believe <laughs> that I'm legitimately picking them randomly. <laughs> I guess, you know, but so, so I'll do that. I'll do that just on a, the Twitch stream. Um, uh, there is a little bit of an interest in the bot stuff. So, and I have exactly 30 minutes ish left. Um, um, I'm just checking if, um oh uh um sorry i'm just checking to make sure there's a small chance that what i have to do although uh would be canceled or changed so i'm just checking that but that doesn't seem to have happened <laughs> okay so I'm going to end this poll because I'm, I'm getting uh, uh, the idea of it. Um, and I'm just looking at the chat. Um, oh. um, all right. So let me come back over here to the computer. Oops. So I, I think it would make sense for me to just keep going down this road of generating a tile system. 
and um i mean in a weird sort of way i almost want to just like copy this exactly but um but let me look here like i kind of want to just use one of these existing ones just to understand So I'm trying to understand these because I, I think it would help me to like do the algorithm if I were to pick an existing example. The tiles have the same symmetry as their assigned letters. Or in other words, what's fascinating about this, by the way, is I do a lot of teaching about Markov chains with text and it always comes up like, well, how could you do a Markov chain in two dimensions with pixels? This is essentially that. And I, I can't believe that I never really sort of made that connection before. Um, what is this? Oh, this is just showing it running. But what I'm trying to understand is the tiles are the same symmetry as their assigned letters. Uh huh. With this system, you have to enumerate pairs of adjacent tiles only up to symmetry which makes list of adjacencies for tile sets with many symmetrical tiles, even the summer tile set. Okay. Like, this is what I'm trying to understand here. I see that these are the three possible tiles. Oh, they're rotations also. I'm like, how, like, how could you get the, the top and the bottom? Because of rotations. And the adjacencies are, ah... However, it's rotated. Um, I just don't see what are the adjacencies. Why are we not seeing like the full enumeration of the adjacencies? Um, Chris Ray asks to briefly explain the tile for the, the type topic for the new arrivals. Uh, I'm not going to be able to briefly explain it, but it is uh, this algorithm called wave function collapse. And it is explained here and through other links. I've, I should have added them to the video description. I apologize. But you'll find a ton of resources here. Um, but I'm just trying to understand. Um, okay. All right, let me, let me try to enumerate. I, I like this one, oddly enough. So let me try to, to generate a set of marching squares. Yeah, I know I could generate an example image and do all the tiles that way. I, I just have very little time. <laughs> so I, right now I'm just looking at kind of trying to just use this time to read and research a bit more. Like, I'm going to have to come back and implement this. But I just want to try to understand exactly how this works. So let's look at this one. Um, because I feel like this one is going to help us understand. I'm actually going to go to um, this particular view so that we can kind of see all of this to, at the same time as I go over to the whiteboard. Okay. So, and... And in case you're just tuning in, this stream is going to wrap up in the next 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I started kind of this coding challenge. It's going to take me longer. But I feel like this is such an important and valuable topic for people interested in the sort of creative coding space that me dedicating multiple live streams to it and having a lot of material to use to edit together for a sort of condensed video about it it's worth the investment of time and i apologize to for the sort of limits that i have right now um <clears throat> so let's look at these two tiles i'm going to try to redraw them here so here one is essentially a t well i mean one is blank or gray but we'll call it a uh, blank and the other one it looks like this and I didn't dry, sorry, I didn't dry the whiteboard effectively enough. And it's, uh, okay. Let me just try this again. Okay. The two tiles, I'm just going to put them over here. 
I can't remember them, but I can see them. Look like this. And then another one is just blank. So what I want to understand is, if I have this particular tile, this one, What are the possible tiles that could go here, here, and all the adjacencies? So, and there's only two possible tiles. So clearly, what the only possible tile that could go here is the blank one. I, I drew a larger space thinking there might be multiple ones. Ah, but here, um, I, they have rotations, so um, the tiles that could go here would be uh, could be this, but it could also be. I'm, I'm drawing this in such a weird way, so it could be this, right? So I think I want to try to draw. I have a better idea of how to draw this. So this only has one possibility. This has two possibilities. Oh, my drawing's kind of terrible. Right over here, we have, there's three possibilities, right? We could have this. We could have this. Or we could have this, right? And then here is the exact same two possibilities is up there. I mean, if I didn't allow for rotations, no, there has to be rotations. So if I were building a grid of them, and if it were just, oh, I didn't, this marker has died. Um, I need. I'm I'm sorry that I'm not looking at the chat right now. This is one of the things I want to do is buy some extra monitors and things so I can sort of see the chat over here. But um, if I'm building this, just making sure everyone can see me. If I'm building a grid. And I put this in the center. We'll call this tile A. If A goes in the center, the entropy of like these, I mean, right now, like is one, two, two, three, right? So am I understanding the system correctly? The first tile is A, 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 B, and the second is B, 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 B. Interesting. Oh, right. So it would make more sense if I wanted to do this for me to think of it like uh, to think of it like the Oscar Stahlberg example, where here are all the possible tiles. OK, <laughs> I've got a better idea now. Sorry, everybody. OK, so see, I, this is why I wanted to work this out. Ah, ah racing. Everything is such a mess. Okay. But I, I appreciate all of you so much in tuning in and experiencing this with me. Because it's this is one of those things, this is one of my favorite kind of algorithms that is so incredibly simple conceptually in in a in a manner of speaking. But um, um 
is much harder to implement because of all the different parts and moving pieces, but now I have an idea. Now I understand. Let's look at all, actually all the possible tiles. Okay. Oh, I really want to program this now. It'll have to come later. Another time, next time. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm really kind of ready for this. And I'm, um, all right, so look. Let's look at all the possible tiles. This is so much simpler than I, than I had. And uh, and then, so there are five possible tiles, essentially. Like we could think of them as rotations, but let's not even do that right now. Let's just think of them as five. So, um, and then let's think about the what what can match here. So the 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 side of a tile is either blank or it is a I don't know what to call this like a pipe, a connection. So we could call the blank. A, and the connection B. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to take a, a given tile, like this one, let's say I put this tile first, and it's an A connection on all sides. I The only things that can go here would be this or that, because I need a tile with an A on the right. And the only things that could go here are this tile or this one, because I need an A connection on the top. So I could have each one of these, as a little image that I load, and then I could have like a JSON file that basically for every image has an array of possible things that could go. I could totally program this now if I had a little bit more time. <laughs> but it, this makes sense to me now. And this is exactly what we're seeing in this particular demonstration. It's just more uh, sophisticated. The top of the T can butt up against each other, too. Um, I'm trying to understand that. The top of the T can butt up against each other, too. Um, oh, yes, 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 I didn't see that. <clears throat> Great. So, <coughs> this one can also, like, if I were had this, uh, this side can connect to here or this tile. Oh, I want to do this so bad. What time is it? Okay, it is 11.30. Oh, that's way too much time. Uh, Right, the tricky part is not the algorithm, but all the data structures involved. Yeah, I, I actually, to me, this is very, feels very doable because um, it, it's, you're right, there's not like some really, it's not like, like, okay, let's look at backpropagation. Okay, well, we need to, let's talk about partial derivatives. <laughs> like looking at a neural network and how it's trained and the weights are adjusted, like there's a lot of math uh, and concepts that w might be completely unfamiliar to you, or like in my case, things that I studied and maybe felt a mm, little bit of conf not kind of a conf an understanding of, but it's been uh, 30 years. <laughs> I'm old. Um, but this is like a really fun kids puzzle. 
And in fact, it would be really cool to do, like, to, to print this out and to actually do, make a physical version of this um, as part of a video. Um, so I don't know what to do with these 15 minutes, but I think um, one thing I could do, I'm just curious, is I know I really want to make a version that analyzes an image for the tiles, but now I'm back to thinking that it would be really nice to just start with some prefab tiles and a list of what goes with what. Let me take a let me take a minute to go down this road before I really have to go. So, are these is this like one image? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um. I don't know why this one is really cool too. This one really appeals to me. I can't exactly explain it. Oh, this. Wait a second. This is just one tile. Oh, I love that. <laughs> we could do the one tile version. That is wild. Uh, that is wild. That, sorry, everybody, for the spam in the chat. Um, and I appreciate, thank you, Alka, who I see. With, um, um, I'm always, we're always looking for additional people who can help um, moderate. Um, you'd want to join the Discord and get in touch there. Um, and there's sort of a process for that, but um, so I don't need to just say like, oh, just tell me your name and I'll make you a moderator. But um, how about generating some square images? So yeah, let's go to P5 Web Editor and let's just look at very briefly how I might generate these images. So I'm gonna make a really small canvas that's 50 by 50 um, and oh, let's move this over a bit whoops sorry I gotta I gotta just get rid of my discord because it has all these direct messages and things um, okay so I'm sorry that I'm about to run out of time <laughs> this is <laughs> the one thing about stream it's yeah uh, never mind okay <laughs> Uh, I just like I, I marvel sometimes about how if I were teaching a class at NYU, which I'm on sabbatical right now, I like obsessively prepare for like days, like over prepare, way over over prepare. <laughs> and yet here I am streaming on YouTube to what is essentially a, 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 a audience of a much larger magnitude than the 12 to 16 students. I guess the tuition at NYU is kind of it's kind of uh, uh, expensive. Um, all right, sorry, I got off track there. So um, let's try let's try making some of these tiles. Uh, let's let's make the data. I just want to make the data structure. So what's a good? Uh, just trying to think of how to. I know Simon, you would tell me to automate this, but I, I kind of want to do this manually just for right now. All right, let me try to recreate. Uh, I think I want two two tiles. Uh, where is that? The thing is, I could just make these images in Photoshop. I should be able to code them, right? I hope this. Um, what am I doing? Which one did I say I like? I don't know why I'm obsessed with this one. So let's try this one. Although, um, okay, okay. I could do <laughs> Sorry. I, I, the thing is, I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking, oh, you don't even see my computer. I'm sorry. The one tile version looks like a recent number file video. Yeah. It's kind of amazing how this is like 10 print, actually. Also. Um, um, okay. So sorry that I was. Um, let's. Okay. So let's, let's just look at how I would generate a tile. Um, And let's do, um, oh, hold on, let me turn. Now we're going to do a uh, background. Actually, you know what? I should do this as let's, I should do this with 
create graphics. Um, and let me make this much bigger so you can see it a little bit better. And um, put on auto refresh. Uh, so this this is going to wrap up in just a second, but I just want to give you an idea of how I might go about doing this. All right, now I'm sorry, Simon is so right. I always listen to Simon, everybody. I should just draw an image and then like pull out the titles. But I'm going to do it this way just for a second here. Um, we'll make the second tile. Uh, and um, okay, eventually. What? <laughs> Is there some weird pixel density issue? No. Oh no, I know why. I'm <laughs> and these aren't width and height, these are oh god. Uh, I, I'm trying to do the most simple thing ever and I couldn't get it. Okay, I made two tiles, everybody. <laughs> Hurry, please. Thank you, half and half. Um <clears throat> Uh, oh, there's a new number file video about stitch patterns. That's cool. Um, I know, sorry. I, uh, okay, tile one, tile two. Now, um, <clears throat> let's say in tile two now, I want to draw, I'm going to say rect mode, tile two, rect mode, center. Uh, tile to fill. I'm just going to kind of use a green color. Tile to stroke zero. Tile to stroke um, uh, stroke weight four, and then rectangle um, tile to width times 0.5. Tile to height. Um, what did I miss here? Uh, zero. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. Tile to height times 0 0.5. This is very silly what I'm doing. But because let me just hard code this because these numbers are getting kind of crazy. It's just 100 by 100 to people. 50, 50, 25, 50. Okay. Um, oh, tile 2 dot rect. Oh, and it's a hundred. What am I throwing me? The height is one hundred. And if I make it a little bit bigger, <laughs> yes, I made two tiles, everybody. <laughs> two tiles. <laughs> I have my soundboard back. I got to use it for something. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to The Coding Train, where I stream for two hours to make a green stripe in a P5JS sketch. Now, just, just showing you how I can have auto-refresh on. It's saving a lot of files. Uh, let's go to uh, this. But I don't need to save it because, oh, I really wish I had more time. So I made this even simpler because this is only going to produce vertical stripes. B5 
because um, you'll see in a second. But the rules now are, let's try to th imagine this data structure. And I think there's specific terminology that if I reread the wave function collapse algorithm page, I'll have a better sense of. But let's just call this, I'm going to call this like the WFC. And we have basically tile one. So I can make this an array of arrays. But I think I want a lookup table. So I'm going to have, let's see, I'm just going to think about this tile one has four edges. And um, all right, hold on. How would I want to do this? So, like, what if I had an array? And each array had an object in it that had the tile, the adjacencies, uh, like, what, what would I call this? The adjacencies. J, I can't, which would be um, tile one is the first one. And that's the image. So I should say image. I should call these image one and image. And the adjacencies I could say are four arrays of what could go, of what is possible. Uh, I think there's a sort of convention. Like this reminds me, what was that video I did about sort of like northwest? So north, east, south, west. I mean, we could do something with diagonals. Sorry, my nose is running. Um, so, the and let me just call this. Oh yeah, and this should actually not be an array. It should be like, like I should have like a lookup table, like. So I can say, like, here's, here's what the image is and here's what the rules are for each one of these tiles. Like, imagine if it was like this. And the adjacencies are, if I am, this is tile A, right? The only thing, the things that can go on the left, so let's start. What would be good? Let's start with north, and I'm going to go clockwise. North, east, south, west. So what can go north here is just tile A. What can go to the east is tile A or B. What can go to the south is just tile A. And what can go to the east, to the west, is also tile A, A, or B. And then I can do the same exact adjacencies for B, which is what can go to the north or south is only B itself, and what can go to the east or west is A or B. So it's actually exactly the same. But um, B here and B here. So is this, and this should be tile two, is this a reasonable way to organize the data for something like this? This is how I would do it, just thinking about it. Now, unfortunately, I can't take the next step with this because I have to go. But to me, this makes sense. And the next step would be to, I mean, come on, how hard could this be? Um, <clears throat> like,
like what if like let's just just we'll do like a little random walk thing for a second in a way let's just and my 400 and this would be 25 25 and 12 50 we don't want to draw these tiles anymore so what if I had now um, uh, it's four by four or eight by eight. So that's 64 tiles. And What if I were to uh, set them all up as undefined and then just doing this in a very hard coded way real quick. Um, hold on, I was thinking about something else for a second. Oh, uh, And I would draw or I would do this. Oh. And draw um, that image. X times five, because 50, yeah. Each one of those is, no, it's 50 by 50, what am I saying? So we're seeing nothing because, but if I put in a particular, well, that's not gonna do anything. If I put this in, aha. Okay, so I got to deal with the fact that there's those extra lines there, but that's fine. But why is that? Uh, oh, because it's... Okay, so now what I could start doing is I could have an algorithm that while there's still um, it's funny that I'm actually doing <laughs> the wave function class algorithm, but in this very sort of crude, quick and dirty way, but I, I am recording this disk, but I kind of like gave up on like the full blown coding challenge energy. <laughs> Just like I'm half blown coding challenge energy right now. That sounded weird. Um, and I also really have to go. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, but essentially, like, I could have some algorithm now. I could put this in draw. Oh, but these are not, did I make them global variables? That's fine. So, all right, I have to stop. This is very unfortunate, but I really have to go. And um, yes, Levionin, the idea here is that um, those, those adjacencies, did I spell adjacency correctly? That, does, that looks so wrong right now. 13th, adjacencies, there's a C. A J, 
adjacencies, adjacencies. There's no N there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I know what I'm doing later today. I'm sorry that I won't be able to like live stream more of this. I mean, I, actually, I think I'm going to hold off because I really don't want to do this too much in advance. But I think I have a much better idea now of how to come back and work this out. So thank you for being here. Neil writes, I'm just reading this. Uh, if you write out the neighbor mappings directly, then each time you add a square, you have to add all of the previous square neighbors. I'm not sure I fully understand that. My idea for what the next step would be is I would pick one of these randomly. Then I have like a 50-50 shot. I could pick a random cell, I put one in it, and then I pick randomly up, down, left, right. Look at what's possible there and pick another random one. Look what's left over up, down, if I pick to the right, I'd only could pick up up, down, or to the right, and I'd keep picking them until I fill the whole thing. I think. But I'm going to stop this now because I got to go. So uh, thank you for everyone for being here. Um, this is wrapping up the live stream. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. And that this is getting you down the pathway towards implementing wave function collapse. I am fully committed to this project. I believe that I could come back and do the full thing in a live stream recording session. Maybe I'll do it as just like an extra members only session or do it on Twitch now that I've already had kind of a live stream about it. I don't know. Send me your thoughts and feedback to daniel at thecodingtrain.com or at Schiffman on, at, on Twitter. Um, and uh, do the cells with the fewer possibilities first. Yes, yes, yes. So there's an order that I want to go in based on the amount of entropy, right? That makes absolute sense. Um, not just a random walk. Um, so uh, check out uh, the UUR bot on Twitter the macro data refinement program at GitHub's Lumen Industries. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's fine. But if you do, you know, come and join. Join me in my weird extra side procrastination projects. Um, I will, uh, this, the survey is closed. I will be contacting any of you who filled it out. Um, you'll get an email whether if you were picked randomly uh, to receive stickers. Hopefully we'll send you an email if you weren't, just so everybody knows. And, um, yeah, stay tuned. There'll be more. More Coding Train coming to you. I, I really appreciate all of you watching and kind of going with the flow as I try to figure out what it is that I'm doing on this YouTube channel. And, oh, there's a minute left in the song. Um, so um, we'll see. I thank you to all of you who are saying thank you in the chat. Uh, what's coming up next? I, I, want, I need to reboot. I'm going to be making sequence tutorials about how to make a Twitter bot with machine learning models and how to moderate the tweets before they get posted. So that's coming up. Where is my notes? Other things to talk about. Ah, if you are an Apple II Plus aficionado and know Apple Basic and want to get in touch with me to give me tips and suggestions, um, check out the Processing Fellowships and the Google Summer of Code. Also, um, let me not forget to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. And that's all I have for you. I will see you next time on The Coding Train. <laughs> Goodbye. This is for all of you. We got the This Dot song. And, the, and oh, are we going to have a musical dance experience, everybody? It's time. It's time for the musical dance experience. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. I'm doing this like silently, but my mic is still on. Feels very weird. This dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. I want to go to that full wide shot, but the music won't go through it. I'll see you all. Have a good day.
this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, 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 never forget this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song, never forget the this dot. Somebody composed that song for me. All right, goodbye everybody. Stream going off. I hope if you have suggestions or thoughts about this new studio setup, I would love to hear them. Goodbye. I'm finding the button to press. Where's that button to end the stream? There it is. I'm hitting it now. The stream will stop immediately and you will no longer be live. That's what I'm going for.